Hey, welcome back. So this is part two, and we have our client here that is freshly shampooed, well, descaled and shampooed. And now we're just gonna go straight back into braiding her hair up for her next install. With the removal of her frosted skin as well as some of the built up skin, her scalp is red, but it's not hurting her. It's not irritated in any way. It's just a little stressed out from, from what we had went through. This is the medicine that her doctor prescribed to her in Stellar. I absolutely love this medicine. It comes on cold. It's like a freezing effect almost, but not painful. And it comes on really, really thick. It's almost like an aerosol lotion, if, if that makes sense. So in the other video, I told her that her skin all over had changed texture. And we have these two areas in the back that are still a little different. So once we scratch up everything, her skin still has changed. And these are some more red areas. Um, she had a lot more of that raised skin when she first started coming. And with the Instellar and with us removing as much as we can each time, it shrunk those patches. And now she has um, what appears to be more healthy looking skin. She's enjoying the fact that she doesn't have as many breakouts and her scalp is not as tight as it used to be. So I put that in and I rub it in really good and I also hit it with the heat just to melt it in a little bit more because I don't want it sitting on top because I won't be able to grip my needle if it's coated that thick with the um with that that oil. But the, the dryer is not in the recommendations from the manufacturer. It's just something that I do. I don't know if it affects the the outcome, but it, we're still seeing results, so I'm okay with it. So you see now the scalp has changed in appearance after the medicine was applied. And that's it. Just I think that's just moisturizing, moisturizing and soothing the scalp so that it's not trying to um, repair itself as fast. Now, anytime you remove a large mass on somebody's body that your body has gotten used to, it, your body considers it trauma and your body starts regenerating what it can to rebuild what was just removed. So that's kind of the same, if, like when you're removing a callus from your foot, you know, you don't scratch it off. Like if you were to buff it off, it, would, it, would, it wouldn't grow back as fast or as hard. So it's the same um, idea, mindset. You don't violently remove the scalp scales. That's why we pre-soften and we soften it up and, and we get it to the point where it want, it's ready to be scratched off. You never want to do it dry. You always want to do it wet. You want to, you want to soften that skin up and just protect it more. As of right now, doctors and scientists really don't know the direct cause of seborrheic dermatitis or psoriasis. They have, however, researched enough to know when the symptoms flare up the most. And a lot of times it's stress, it's poor diet, and it's extreme temperatures. So when it's really hot and it's really cold outside, those are going to be your times where you have the most flare-ups. So the sew-in, I know a lot of people are going to say, how could you take a sew-in down and put it right back up? The scalp has got to breathe. Okay, I understand and I get it. And we will let her scalp breathe after her next installation. But she's got a, a heavy schedule coming up soon. And she was just like, hey, Carla, I just want to put back up. We're going to go with the curly hair. Um, I don't really want to have to deal with it too much and I'll be back and we're going to do a short haircut and um, we're going to do a style on her next time. So we're not going to put it up in the extensions, but this just keeps her. She's in a public eye, so she just wants to always be put together and kept nicely. And this allows her to do that while we're working on um, helping her doctor treat her issue. I hope you watched the, vid the first video, the part one, because I got a little bit Went a little bit deeper into what's going on with her and um, how, you know, what's going to happen. Right now you see a clean scalp, but, you know, in a couple of weeks it's going to be a, a different situation. So this is the sew-in process. You see my stitching is really close together up front. Her, when, when you just saw me take the other one down in the previous video and you still see how close together her stitches were, how nice her hair was put together. So... This insulation is going to last her a while. The net up underneath also it, it creates an extra layer of protection for her hair. I think this is a reason why her hair is growing so much faster than it was. And, um, and we're regenerating those, 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 those hair follicles. So we have this curly hair in. This is her second install on these, um, these bundles. I don't remember where she got this hair from at all. So 
can't help you on that. So now this is the separation, and I want to see how it blend, you guys to see how it blends in. When we're cutting in shape and extensions, especially curly hair, you don't want to cut in a straight line. You want to cut um, either vertical or diagonal. You really don't want to cut do horizontal cuts. You just kind of want the curls to kind of blend into one another. And if you use horizontal cuts or blunt cuts, then they're just going to sit on top of one another. So right now we're just going to wet the hair down and you see up underneath there she still has plenty of space. I think you can see through some of it when I'm finger combing it. She can still apply her, her medicine through her braids. So she still is going to be able to treat herself. And we didn't apply any heat. We just um, texture blended her curls into itself. Thanks for watching everybody. Please like the video.